back, everyone. We are here. We are ready for some N.A. Dota. Optic Immortals starting it off, and then later EG versus Cole, and then even later than that, we will determine another member of the TI Squadron. With the A winner going to TI. Finals. Yeah, yes. winner break Squadron. Finals. The Squadron. So uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, Cap, I believe we do have another matchup running right now. Uh, do you know where it's at? Uh, yes, our draft is actually already underway. First two picks. No, I meant the other It's already done. Uh, meanwhile, we do have uh, Blinkpool <laughs> versus Kingwin. Yes. And that's going to be on Twitch.tv Beyond the Summit 2. And if you did not if you did see the first game or if you didn't, uh, Kingwin got kind of bodied. They got out drafted and then they got destroyed. I mean, I, from what I'm looking I mean, I know we're in NA, but Europe feels like OG, they're really good. Mm -hmm. Wind and Rain and Blinkpool are pretty good. And then everyone else is down there. That's my take. So you're pretty much saying Kingwin's the first team out? Yes. Kingwin like. King got Damn. bodied pretty hard game one. And I have a feeling game two will be the same. I mean, Misery Socks, uh, they own. Like, you have a support duo that ownage. They're going to be good. But here's the draft. And it's a Nagamurana. Hey, Grant, you want to know what my fortune cookie said? Not really, because most fortune cookies aren't actually fortunes. It's just life advice, and it pisses me off. But go on. Share your many talents with your community. That's not a fortune. <laughs> That's literally not a like fortune. I had the do same thing. I don't remember what it was. It says like advice. trust your own decisions. Like they'll take you far yeah. or whatever. And I'm like that doesn't tell me what's gonna happen to me. And yeah, it tells like, me what I'm supposed to do. The stars align to make you look good. That's or the stars align so that maybe in the future you can do something. You're like damn, that's good. That's good. <laughs> but okay, there's a Venomancer. We've been seeing this here actually banned a lot in NA and really nowhere else. But now it's picked. I saw it picked a lot in China. Did you? Okay. Yeah, when I was watching their qualifiers, they picked it a lot as like a just a utility hero that kind of just you sit in the lane and the other team, if they don't send two heroes there, you, you're going to lose your tower. So that was kind of the idea of Venomancer in this patch where he doesn't necessarily win his lane early, but eventually the passive like harasses any hero out of lane so nobody can really like occupy the lane against him by themselves. Okay. That's kind of like the idea of the hero. But the way you deal with that, because... Uh, the fact that he slowly wears you down is by killing him. So Naga Marana is not a terrible way in the slightest to deal with something like that. Hmm. And a Naga Marana, just a good combo. I think Velo has been playing it a lot for their team, so I assume that might just be their offlane duo. Obviously, you can't put it mid, you can't put it safe lane. That's what makes Marana so good. Very hard to... Very hard to lane against, just because anytime you usually most supports want to harass from the side of the lane, and if you're not inside of creeps, you just get netted into like a four second arrow, and you're gonna at least lose most of your health at the very best. Have fun. Yeah. Blitz, what do you like about this opening four picks? <coughs> I mean, I think Night Stalker right now is just a really good hero, but he's weird because some regions value him, like C region thinks. That hero is amazing, obviously, and a lot of the others kind of like differ in that regard. I think Venno is a hero that Optic is, I think they play twice now in this quals or something like that. Yep. I still don't know quite where this hero's like place is in the game. After lightning phase, like just what does he do kind of thing? Like or? in the past, it was pretty clear cut, right? What Liquid would do with him. They would just shove down mid tower, then they'd take the two bottom ones. Uh, if you're on Radiant, and then you would just like set up that triangle of farm on Dire Side, and it, it, it'd be pretty straightforward. You just get really farmed. You had like the 90 GPM talent, uh, and then you had that DPS talent at the end with yeah. the uh, upgraded wards, and you just became a beast. But nowadays, it's like it's not so straightforward. I mean, you guys played it right in the quals. Yeah, yeah, we like, played it once. Yeah. What's the what's like the rough idea behind? Well, what happened was I watched uh, I watched IG do it in the in the China quals, and what the idea behind the hero is that. Most teams are putting a lot of value on their own safe lane tier one now because yeah. of denies. <coughs> they, they're, they're prioritizing defending it. So rather than having Venno be like a lane pressure hero that takes towers himself, he basically sits in his own safe lane and says, you're not going to take our I tier see. one without putting up a lot of resources in order to get it. So like I saw them like run it against Beastmaster type heroes specifically because Beastmaster is an offlaner that kind of his goal is to continuously pressure that and eventually take the tower such that he can control your jungle and run around the map killing yep. you. And uh, so Venomancer's main purpose is to deny that entire thing happening. So if Beastmaster, like, that makes sense because Beastmaster doesn't really rotate very well, right? Exactly. Like, he really wants to be able to... So it feels like you're just, like, failing at yeah, your purpose we, in the game. I think when we did it with our team, like, honestly, I missed the first level Gale, which in a lane against Beastmaster, if you let it snowball against you, is 
like day and night difference compared right. to what it would be otherwise. So like when I missed the first gale, we were like, oh god, this lane's bad. But like, <laughs> like uh, it's one of those where it is conceptually a nice counter. Like okay. it's, it's just like you can still, it still can go wrong. There's an oracle. Good against Venno for the magic damage, I guess. That's what I was saying. Did they? Just, I mean, it's it's a decent hero, but it felt like they see Venno, they're like, let's get an oracle. I don't know if that's always the best decision. Yeah. But. You can dispel off the Silence of Night Stalker, and you can get some sort of weird setup with your uh, Fortune's End on like an ally or something off of the sleep. That's like some really weird yeah. three-second entangle shenanigans. But Immortals had to know Lena was coming after Optic Band TA as well. They're not going to take it themselves. So there's Lena's the best here on the pool right now. This is a interesting lineup from Immortals. It's like you get Marana. She's been moving up the the uh, hero ladder quite a bit lately. Real quick, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, we have a Naga Siren, but then you take an Oracle, maybe you Huskar or something. I don't know, because this is a pretty slow lineup from Immortals right now. They've they have this one hero that doesn't shove lanes in easily. They've got this Naga Siren Oracle support duo. Like I don't know how they get kills. Um. So maybe it's a Huskar or something. I'm not sure. I don't think you can ever Huskar into Lena though. Yeah, yeah. it's really annoying because she just out DPSs you. And you like it, heroes that heroes like Huskar and Terrorblade. I just use those as examples because they're like low ranged, high DPS heroes. Really struggle against heroes that outrange them. So it's just odd because it's this is like a conceptually really slow lineup, and it gets even slower like they do so. Yeah. When we say slow, it just means like you can't make plays. You're just kind of like stuck. The lack of mobility makes yep. it so that you're just like stuck taking right. fight after fight. Yeah, your, your play is right net in the arrow. That's yeah. like your only play currently. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're not. What about the Oracle Medusa gank? <laughs> you Q and right click them slowly. Get them. I feel like this game so far, based like agreeing with what Blitz is saying and everyone else, is that it's with the, how much lane shove Optic has. Like they have Jakiro who pushes lanes, Venno who pushes lanes, and Lina. And Immortals has like virtually no playmakers. I feel like by eight or nine minutes, if everything goes according to plan, which I feel like on the drafts it will for Optic, is Immortals is going to be stuck under their tier ones defending while Optic's just shoving lanes in and hitting no. jungle creeps. And they're not going to like try to force any kills if they don't have to because I think Immortals counterplay is really good. But like if if they have no like ability to kill you, you just push it into their tower and let them farm creeps underneath their tower, and you just don't really care. So I feel like that's what the game is going to primarily look like about nine or ten minutes in. So you need like a really good fighting hero for Immortals now, right? Yeah, Something you need that a, hero, a do shit hero yeah. is the way I try to... You yeah. need more catch too. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. You want you want more ways to open up a fight than just Arrow and Naga sleep. Although the, the thing about that makes Naga such a cool hero is that her sleep is like one of the by far the best. There's like no, there's nothing like it, right? You're, you just get this like huge AOE setup spell. Yeah, essentially that like either forces a fight or disengages it. I I actually would love if they. Okay, they actually banned Tidehunter. See, I was thinking maybe this is some sort of Nagasar and Marana aggro duel. I I think they should get like a Pango or something for Immortals, in their off lane and just put the Marana safe lane. I think they're more like do shit heroes out of the off lane. I guess. Mm. Yeah, if they pick a carry, the only one I see is Peel, but that doesn't even sound very good to me because it's like. It's like a douche. It's like it's a hero that does like does stuff around the map, but it like usually needs like a plus one, and they don't really have that. So it's going along with what you said, I don't see any carries that actually contribute early. Well, they got yeah, there you go. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, they definitely had no options in the carry role, so that makes a lot of sense. But now you can just dump a really strong safe lane hero if you and just put like Venomancer Night Stalker, is like a, an aggro or something like that. Yeah, like, like you could literally just dump whatever hero you want against Pango because he doesn't threaten you. Can't you just put like a jug or something, that like, that just doesn't die, and then you play around the Veno and Lena? Or the PL that you mentioned earlier could yeah. go on Optic against Dusa. Yeah, anything like that, like anything that just doesn't doesn't die in the safe lane. I feel like is what they'll prioritize here. Jug, Life Stealer. Uh, have we seen Jug PL? once? I don't think so. I have seen it once. This. I have. Yeah, we saw it. an essay qual. Did you? Yeah. How, how did? Was it a winner or a loser? I think it won. It was uh, HFN played it. 
Okay. I feel like the hero's undervalued just because a lot of people kind of forget about him. But I don't his think he's mana good. costs on his spells. Like yeah, I don't think he's good, really but like bad. I just feel like a lot of teams like there's random lineups, kind of like Huskar as an example. They just yep. forget the hero exists, and then some. Yeah, that, that's a hero that doesn't die. I don't think they have very many ways to kill Pie Cat nope. in this game. Exactly. Yeah. So if you had picked like like a Luna type hero, that hero, even though they have very limited ways to kill, you're still very vulnerable just because you have no like innate survivability. So that's why they pick a carry that I just mentioned, all the ones that came to my mind, you know, time walk on void accomplishes the same purpose. You're just like, as long as I don't get netted into five second arrow, there's like no way you're dying. And you've got two range cores and you've got a really good range support that takes advantage of the chronosphere. Absolutely. Oh, I think Optic takes this pretty easily. I will say, I bet this Medusa will have the first or second highest net worth, but it won't matter because the rest of this team is just going to struggle super, super hard. And I think Optic wins this by about 30. Oh, is this Core Night Stalker or is it? I thought it was going to be Core Venno. Yeah, it's Core Night Stalker, it looks like. I feel like they're just going to itemize the counter Dusa. I feel like their entire lineup is a revolver on this Dusa. They're going to build like one or two halberds yep. and just ignore her. Well,. Crimson Halberd stuff. Before me and BSJ leave, I will give you a fortune myself cap. <laughs> Why Those just cap? who do not go into offline mode will be punished heavily. I'm waiting for the transition from draft to in-game. See ya. Just kidding. <laughs> Blimp, I'll, give you, I'll give you one as well. Okay, I want to hear it. Be as hype as you can, but don't be too hype, because the hypest man can be the hypest not man. <laughs> That's so awful. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Grant, for that excellent <laughs> insight into commentary. I can't follow that. <laughs> All right, I have actually no idea. Hello. Hey. It's going to be us again. We're going to be doing a nice little duo cast for Immortals versus Optic, the number one seed versus the number four seed. I just get it. <laughs> but hey, seeds don't matter. What matters is whether or not you could beat the enemy. And mm -hmm. Immortals, <laughs> well, I feel like that's a bit of a long shot because Immortals, they feel like the very distant fourth place, just like um, how Grant was describing Kingwin in the European qualifiers. Seems like Complexity, Optic, and EG are all maybe a step above. But yeah. hopefully, they, I mean, that can all change, right? One hot day, one you just learn from the, the lessons of the group stage, and you can just turn into a different team, figure something out. Did you guys ever have a moment on Liquid or DC that you figured something out for a tournament and just rolled over things? Uh, it was, remember the Manila Major when I was working with them full-time? Yeah. It was like, we had just played Complexity, and it was this really boss moment. After game one of Complexity, Kuro said, and I, I shit you not, he, he looks at us all and he says, guys, we're going to win this thing. Like, it was the first round of the loser bracket. And I was like, damn. Beating Kyle gave you a lot of confidence, huh? <laughs> 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 and true to his word, what, we, what, we went on to win that tournament. You, you guys did not <laughs> win that tournament. You played second. You guys got thrashed by OG. <laughs> hey, we won game one. <laughs> oh. We ursed them. Yeah. Maybe relax a little bit. Great okay. job. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes like you just something hits. Like and and it it's just this random thing. Sometimes like I knew we were gonna lose. Like at Epicenter, Kuro figured it out. You know, he's like, I got yeah. this. Like, I know what I know what they're going to do. And then there's other times where at Shanghai Major, he just looked and he said, I don't know what to do anymore. Like, I I've mm. lost it. Like, let's just play. They, we, I think we ran a draw strat in our very last game. Yeah. And we had never touched that hero once. It was like truly the... Well, I remember I, I talked to you for that game and you were like, I, I don't know what we did. Yeah, it's like we, we just ran out of ideas. Some, so some stuff like that always happens. It's like... You're either having the confidence, like, okay, it doesn't matter what happened beforehand, it doesn't matter if you're in losers or anything like that. All that matters is, like, did you figure it out? Okay, so we are going to have some lane swaps happening right now. So our Naga Siren and Mirana is top lane with against the Night Stalker Jakiro. And now Pycat is faced up against the Oracle and Pango. I'm presuming that's the lane he wants to be in uh, against the Pango, which doesn't really threaten you whatsoever. He can't die in this lane, and yeah. he's going to get free farm. He has good base damage compared to the Pango. He has like 10 more with the Quelling Blade. Feels quite nice. Meanwhile, there's both better harassment and better kill value out of the Naga Siren and uh, Mirana dual lane. Yeah. Our mid matchup is going to be Roya's Dusa versus CC and C Lina. I mean, this this Night Stalker doesn't care about getting harassed. Yeah. He has just as he has almost as much armor. He's got five armor. 
ton of HP. 5.6 regen per second. Yeah, like, this guy doesn't care. He gladly will get right-clicked by the 51 base damage Marana. Like, yeah. He don't give up. <clears throat> so pretty much it looks like every single lane is going to be pretty good for Optic. If you're saying the Night Stalker is happy with this matchup at top lane, uh, the Lina should be kind of free farming this mid lane. It's, it kind of goes both ways, right? You can't really threaten the Dusa too much. Yeah. Lina almost always gets her own. That's just how Lina matchups go, right? Yeah. So you're going to Dragon Slave. Your Fury Soul, Fiery Soul, allows you to trade very efficiently. Although Ryoya is not having the best time mid. I know these guys are really close. 747 and uh, CCNC. Yeah, I know they always talk and stuff. And when we were at the hub, uh, CCNC was like messaging Ryoya in between games, like offering him encouragement, like, you got this, like, good luck. It was pretty cute. It's nice. Yeah. They're two of the, uh, I think they're they're two of the defenders. Oh, bottom lane. We actually got a kill onto the Venomancer. Velo was able to chase him down. Kind of surprising. Especially with the uh, Oracle not even getting level three. Back over to top lane, Peter Van Dam. He's going to be chased down by the Marana Naga Sire. Now 33 has already gotten a lot of damage onto the Marana. It is still daytime though, so this Void won't really slow him down. MP does have the leap up, so he will be able to get away with the healing salve. 33 is going to try and chase him down. Look at him cutting through the trees. Does manage to cancel about half of that salve usage, and MP will be feeling a little worse for wear after that kill. Yeah. Please tell me you got one of those two kills. I got. The Peter Panda one. Okay. At top, MP. Gonna cop some damage, but so far so good. Um, Immortals, they're up to a 2 0 start. I'm gonna get the arrow eight. time. Arrow? Oh, blocked 33. by 33. He'll tank it. He's the correct person to hit that. PPD would die. But now it means he's got no more regen to work with. Oh, never mind. Peter had a healing self he gave to 33. Roya. Going to be hit by CCNC. The LSA gets a good amount of damage on him on the way out. The CCNC is actually winning this matchup uh, by a decent ish amount. 19 4 versus the 13 and 3. Just got to be pretty happy with how things have gone. He's used a little bit more mana, I guess is the difference. Yeah. Hey, I take it this is. Well, he's got to spam out mana, right? Because Mystic Snake eventually will just deprive him of everything. Uh, Kind of. It's good harass as well. I'm wondering if he pops his salve here. As yes. Yoya is bringing out a lot of regen. Like mid mid battles nowadays are just like who can spam out more regen. Mm. And this is that why lane. you get so angry when people use your courier? Oh, I get furious. <laughs> you really need that ironwood branch in a sentry. Oh, that was a lot of damage. The early javelin from Vel just tore apart Zai. They're gonna be able to chase him down here. The Oracle will quickly get the big nuke out from the purifying flames. That's interesting, that early javelin. I think it's absolutely necessary. It's a cool idea. But you can't get it in the side shop, right? I don't think you can. You can? So he can't you? Oh, can you? All right. Probably, probably not, actually. You can't open up the side shop. Yeah, unfortunately, as a spectator. <sighs> I have no idea what's in there, guys. Dude, if I... <laughs> If I'm just now learning there's a javelin in the side shop, I'm going to be really disappointed as a Pango <laughs> player. <laughs> I'm going to be like, what am I doing? There is value in the ping the javelin Pango. Oh, there. I think in this, when he's getting safe lane farm, they need a uh, they need like actual damage out of their yeah. others. Uh, Before the Deuce right? gets online. Yeah. Like, Ryo is going to take quite a bit of time before he gets any amount of farm that will be worth it. We saw in the European uh, region, there was actually some players. Pablo did it. Um, there was another player who actually got no items and went straight for Javelin as support Pango. Huh. And it's it's pretty crazy the amount of damage that it can do. It's just like a level 3 Pango. And they swashbuckles and it gets a Atop. bunch of Javelin. PPD. Uh, it's going to be Silence. 33. Couldn't really commit, though. He was a little bit afraid getting ensnared maybe into the arrow. MP does have the healing self, though. He'll recover. Meanwhile, Dubu had to make a rotation into mid lane to help save uh, Roya. And Zai, just giving him some right clicks. Oh, they're going to try and chase down Zai. Look at him. Roya actually didn't... Uh, oh, oh, my lord. He just one-shots this squishy support. Oh. All right. One swashbuckle, one shield crash, and that was pretty much the kill. Oh, my... When he used the, the swashbuckle, his HP just vanished. Yeah. 
my guy just went into the twilight zone. <laughs> so the I think the cool part is that the if Dubu uses Fortune Send on PyCat and they get the max duration, he actually is held longer oh, than Backtrack. The arrow did connect, but MP out of mana, and now and the Feb turnaround Febby. Oh, he's actually oh, going to make, MP. but he gets silenced. Oh, he was going to go for the Star Storm play. Couldn't nice get it off. Silence. Now he's going to have to go for Jakiro instead. Might not get that one. The extra shot, oh, he's but gone. the boy comes out. And he ends up going down before he can finish off. Peter Pan, damn. 33. Whew. Oh, the guy's an animal. Mid lane, roll in. They're going to go straight for an early kill on CCNC to help the Dusa out. Velo is not afraid of rotating out of his lane and leading this Faceless Void alone. They went for the kill on Zai earlier, now the kill in top lane. Peter's just going to suicide to neutrals for a quick trip back to base. Arrow time. They kill the, the range creep just in time, so the arrow will land on a 33. MP's going to try and get in range for a good Star Storm. Double leap in, He's more damage. It. The extra Star Storm hit was what was necessary to get that kill, and he does land it. My word. Like, you still have to be worried about this. The combo is still a ton of damage. And yeah. Febby's looking for it right now. Sai doesn't have a TP, does have the Gale to aid him in case any sort of dive happens. And MP isn't the healthiest when it comes to mana. Does have that mango if he needs to pop it. He got that mango because I think he learned his lesson from the previous time. Right. He's like, man, if I could have used a Star Storm immediately, I probably would have gotten the kill. And bottom lane, Pycat. Gonna take a little bit of damage, but... They smoked... 33 and he's got Peter Kano. down here. Now it is daytime, and they do not have level six on Night Stalker, but with just a Chronosphere, it should be enough to blow up anybody in this lane. Yeah, they're looking for it, but Velo's being very cautious here. And PPD gonna run into Dubu, and this might. Uh, they're gonna get the arrow on design. Should be an easy kill here in the top lane, and they know that 33 is not here. This is probably why Immortals is playing so cautious. Dubu might get caught. 33 is going to cut through the trees, cut behind him. Dubu tries to disarm himself with a Fates Edict to protect against the magic damage. Moonlight oh, Shadow not going to go off in time, unfortunately. Velo dodges that dual breath, gets a lot of damage on a Peter Pan Dam, cancels his own ult there. He could have actually run down Peter Pan Dam. Now he's he still, still can with the swashbuckle. Gets oh, all the damage man. he needs out of that Javelin proc. Over to the top lane again. They've caught Pycat. With the Naga Siren Marana duo, looks like with the Moonlight Shadow, they surprised PyCat. And Immortals, rotation out. they're up 9-3 to three right now and are up in net worth as well. This is very well done so far from Immortals. They've created space for their mid lane. The rotations are looking really good. Velo's Pengo is going completely off right now, 3-0-2. That Javelin is eating those supports. Yeah, it was looking damn fine right now. Yeah, things are looking quite good for them. Uh, and I'm surprised to see this kind of hot start because if you asked me who my favorites would be going into the qualifier, it would have been Optic. Yeah. And Immortals was placed into a tiebreaker situation to get that fifth seed. Or I guess fourth seed since uh, Vici just got their automatic entry after winning. But this is not so far going as planned for Optic. And you don't want to be in that loser's side. You want at least that one game cushion minimum. CCNC pushed out the mid lane, smokes with Peter Pan damage. They're going to make a rotation now. Roya instead went up to the top lane and found a regen. So that's going to make that gank really difficult if they choose to wrap on Look at the mid scan. lane. Oh my god, it's going to gank too. It's very well done by Ryoya. And, and the reason I. plays the left hand side. Yeah, I'm just. I'm surprised at this because Optic. I mean. Again, favorites for me. So far, so good. He's going to get heavily dope, though. They're going to use the Chronosphere, everything they have, but he still has a good He's amount good. of mana to be able to work with. Maybe and now Bello can chase down some heroes. He's going to go for CCNC. Nice tight corner, oh, though. CCNC nice. doing a really good job of dodging this. Now gets disarmed. Bello unfortunately gets hit by the cliff, and now he's silenced underneath nice the river. Juke. He's going to be caught. CCNC juked his way out of that one. Meanwhile, top lane, they do manage to kill Zai again with MP and the Naga Siren. Again, that duo just so potent against anybody who tries to stand in lane. That was very well done by CCNC. <clears throat> oh, no, Febby. MP is getting kind of low, too. 33 is going to try and chase him back, force him to use the Shrine. This is a very good Night Stalker game. We Why talked about that? the speed of the heroes in this game, and Night Stalker outpaces all of them. Oh, OK. He's just quick. Yeah. Neither of the supports really want to play against him. The Oracle doesn't feel comfortable coming out into these fights because the Night Stalker will just run him down. Oh, Zai. Almost got hit by a Don't solo tell me. arrow, but he lives. And Zai is just trying to mode farm right now as this four position. 
in a lot worse of a position than this Naga's Iron, who already has a completed urn. So I still working on his MP though. Doesn't have too much farm. Ryoya surviving that gank attempt. I say he has, doesn't have too much farm, but I guess he has the uh, Blade of Alacrity in his inventory. It just feels like everyone's a little bit behind. Yeah. In this game. Just because the heavy rotations, right? Yeah. Like it's I'm like looking at everyone's net worths, and something seems off. You just take a look at the CS, and earlier it was Optic, like top three, but it was also all the kills going to Immortals. So yeah. there's like significant amount of gold loss. On I guess sides. relative to this game, he has farms. Yeah. The Moonlight Shadows popped at bottom pie cat. Looks like he's the target. They do have the Rolling Thunder. It is going to be very difficult to land this arrow, I think. The Rolling Thunder through the trees to catch Pie Cat. The arrow's going to come out, but it's going to be a bit too late, so he holds on to it. Cancels that. Velo still trying to dive in and get some damage onto him. Nice use of the uh, Fortune Send there to remove the time dilation. Meanwhile, top lane, Naga Siren. Pushing him back with the Illusions, trying to stay away from 33, who is currently on the hunt. He has a Vanguard as well as Phase Boots, and he will run into Febby now. Febby. Turn around, tries to go for the ensnare, maybe forced into a sleep here or just to TP out, actually. He's good. Had plenty of time for that TP. Arrow in the bottom lane. They're actually going to be able to catch Pi Cat. Pi gone. I have no idea how they managed to land that one, but looks like Velo could die for that trade off here. Not going to be able to have his swashbuckle up in time to stay away from CCNC. Still, though, a very big kill. I think Velo is gladly going to trade his life for keeping the faceless void or this Lena down every time. Yeah. Didn't think they'd be able to kill him very easily with their lineup, but I guess this Velo Pangolier is enough to get the job done. Still, 1k lead. Oh, Barely the arrow! At. CCNC gets read like a book by MP. Man, MP is going off with these arrows. So that was, that was this vision right here. CCNC walked through, and he just timed the arrow perfectly. And oh, MP. man. MP. Straight up sniper here. I mean, this guy looks really good back when he was on uh, Secret. That was probably his best look at that time. Yes. 33, they're going to try and take this team fight. Zai is on the front lines right now. 33, Hayden, thanks to the darkness. Maybe going to go for the courier. Quick kill there. No, nope, not going to be able to get it. Velo does manage to get the kill in the bottom lane against the solo Peter Pandan, but 33 tried to challenge, challenge this mid lane. Tower's getting a little bit low in Zai. Starts placing some of these wards, but I don't think Immortals is any in any sort of rush to take this tower. Like, I think OG, or Optic, I should say, thought that they were going to be the pace setters in this game with their Night Stalker yeah. and their Lina. Like, they have such fast cores. They just have a lot of kills, but it feels like Immortals just constantly setting the edge, setting the pace. They're not giving them any sort of room to breathe. One moment, you see uh, MP at top farming a lane. The next, he's setting up for kills with uh, Febby. Mm -hmm. Just hitting arrows in mid lane. Like, he's made the trek all the way from top to bottom, back to mid, then back to top. Thanks to this ward right here, they actually know that there's a ward from the dire side here. Because yeah. Velo saw that the Night Stalker was trying to hunt him while he was in the jungle area. So, he pings that out. Not sure if they're going to actually be able to get the D ward in time, because that area is being tightly controlled by Optic. They are just going to try and take this safe lane tower in return, Immortals. They're going to try and put some pressure on this tier 2 at top lane. Maybe they'll go for a poke at mid tower again. But as you said, it feels like they don't really need to force anything right now. Mortals know. They've got a Deuce on their team. They've got a Deuce that hasn't died once. He's leading the board in net worth. He's got this Ancient Sec to work with too. Has a Mask of Madness. So far, so good. And 33 is trying to be everywhere on the map at once right now, but isn't really finding the opportunities. And Optic is relegated right now to farming on this side of the map. This is not exactly where they want to play, but can't really do too much else. Like PyCat at 16 minutes is just about to finish his Mask of Madness. Not the sort of timing that we were expecting considering his lane. Yeah. I like that uh, they give Velo this mid lane to be able to finish up his Blink Dagger, or at least they were giving it to him. Now he's just forfeited it, while Ryoya focused on the Ancients. Velo decides that the bottom lane is pushing in aggressively enough, and it's got a siege creep that he wants to be able to deal with that. Febby, meanwhile, has always been positioned really aggressively here in this top lane, pushing it oh. out with his illusions, but it's MP who's going to be caught by CNC and C and nice. can't get away from those last couple of fire bolts. But Febby might be able to escape, thanks to a Song of Siren. He's, um, is he going to TP? Is he going to TP? Oh, this is going to be a little close here. Wow. Oh, 
Jeez. Oh. He knows his timing, at least. He, he wasted every single millisecond of optics time. That was way closer than... <laughs> if I'm Febby, I'm sweating that. I mean, he did the math. He crushed yeah. the numbers, but... Oh, Heart Piercer is really great for Dusa taking Ancient Stacks. I forgot about that. Mm. You just do it once for him and then... Yeah. Oh, Take away the sense. armor and then you bounce. Give the Dusa all the farm. She is your true core of this game. They got a lot of gold off that kill on MP, though. That eight, that went 800 oh. to the wave CCNC. That is very value for him. So he's going to be able to finish off his Yule Scepter now. Goes for the Shadow Blade next. Very common lane to build. Just kill. That's what they got to do, right? Set up a, a very fast tempo. Dude, Febby is doing some work at this Naga Siren. I feel like he's wasting so much of their time. He's keeping his top lane pushed out. He's, like, they're trying to hunt him constantly, but he hasn't actually died too many times. I think these two deaths were just both in lane. Moonlight Shadow, they're going to try and set up for an instair. That's going to be on Psy. The arrow, oh, well, Murat is super far away. They're going to try for it now. That oh. instair lasts so long, though, Psy. He's just done for now. They're going to try and roll in with Bell. Get some extra heroes. Peter, they saw him thanks to the dual breath, and they're going to be able to bounce him around like a pinball. Take him out as well. Double kill. Double kill on the two supports for MP. Man, that net. He decided to max the ensnare. That's five seconds. Yeah. Could not move. And then on top of that, you even had Fortune's End that Dubu could have charged up if he wanted to. Yeah. So you're, you're hit by an ensnare, you're stuck there for seven and a half seconds, potentially. You're just creating space right now for this for this Medusa mid. Right. And she's super chill right now. yo is watching his team get kills, defend their Tier 1 towers. He's very happy about this. They still have their Tier 1 tower mid. It's completely healthy. As long as they don't lose out to a gank attempt. Like, if I'm Optic right now, I'm looking towards that mid lane, trying to set up potentially for a Chrono at some point. Yeah, we haven't seen a Chrono in a while. Yeah. Bell has been careful not to give opportunities there. He just protects the tower, but he doesn't push the lane out too far. We haven't seen PyCat really participate in this game so far. Yeah. He got that one kill on the support mid, and that's been it. Zero, two, and one. What is the reason for that? I think he just feels like he has to kind of play the catch-up game. Like, if he goes for a Chronosphere, it just might slow down his game too much? Yeah, I think he's afraid of these field gank attempts. And I think once he chronoed Ryoya and saw that he wasn't dying at all. That was a little bit worrisome for him. Yeah. And there is some counters to uh, to this Chronosphere, most notably in the Naga Siren Sleep. Who is currently trying to work on Spirit Vessel. I'm presuming the same as Zai. But this is definitely, I mean, 20 minutes in, it's 15 to 7. Immortals do have a slight net worth lead, but again, they have that late game Dusa. How big of an advantage do you think they have in the late game, though? Because they are facing up against one of the best late game team fight spells in Chronosphere. Yeah, I, I think Chrono is always... It, it'll tip the balance just because it gives you catch. It guarantees team fights for your core. When you have three or four items, uh, you can usually kill anybody. So do you think that makes it even in the late game? It's closer. Okay. But then on the other side, you've got Naga Sleep. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you can kill the Dusa just with the Faceless Void alone. MP is going to be caught at the same time. The Naga Siren runs at a 33. MP, Moonlight Shadow goes out. He's going to be able to miss that kill. Same goes with Febby. He can actually pop the Sleepy one super. They're going to try and blow up Pycat first. Gets oh, off the Pycat time walk so just in time. Now they're going to try and swarm in. They see CNC and they manage to get a, a the really arrow. good song. Arrow. Oh, nice Yule Scepter dodge. on himself. He actually managed to dodge that one pretty well. He still slept up, though. And trying to get in front of him. Good and snare. Holding him in place. Ice Path nice will slow ice down path. Rio's dam damage, but it's not enough. CCNC getting away. Oh, the Chronosphere comes in. It's going to go for the Naga Siren first, but saved by the Oracle. And Roya, he is just not a target the Pycat can really go for. He's going to be locked in by the Ensnare coming out from the Oracle. He goes down. Peter Pan Dam is next from the net. Immortals just running over Optic in that fight. Everybody survives, it looks like. Even Velo. Ticking, 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 but it's a Poison Good. Nova, not lethal damage. And the team fight focus is just not really there from Optic. And the damage, they just don't pump enough into it. You see the Jakiro, his, uh, his macro pyre just a little bit out of position. They didn't really know who they were going for. PyCat's slow start means that he doesn't deal enough DPS right now. Just right. the Mask of Madness going for the oh, BKB. Oh, 33 stuck around to farm. 
Now he's going to be hit by the Karo combination. I don't think he's tanky enough to survive through all this one, especially if Ello joins. I love the quick blink as he saw Zai to make sure he doesn't get tagged by any damage, considering how low he was. They're going to find Zai as well. Febby thinks about going for the ensnare, but seeing the Chikiro and the rest of his they team quite low, they're going to back out. Yeah, Heroes are coming down. CCNT actually just walks by the bounty rune. There are a lot of bounty runes up. I would like to see people get those. I think they missed another <laughs> one as well. It's 22 minutes in. Two minutes of bounty runes up, and two of them are still on the field. Yeah, that's so odd. I, I can understand the top one. Because Vela just expects somebody to well, take no, it because they, now. they fought near bottom for such a long time period. Yeah. That who's going to be down here? But Velo, I, I kind of want you to run by there, baby. <laughs> it's like two steps. He'll figure it out. He'll kill, clear this creep wave, and then it'll probably go. Check out some neutrals. Oh, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> Your lack of greed is going to hurt you here. <laughs> You can see the uh, the mortals drawing a bunch of lines up here in this top lane. I'm not sure if it's oh. because they want Velo to keep the pressure up, like the Naga Siren was doing earlier on this tier two. Okay, just walk two steps to the right, and you'll have it. He's so close, but he, he doesn't uh -oh. want to go over this area. You could see he's staying away, like he's playing on the hard outsides of the map the entire time. Yeah. Moonlight Shadow going out. Febby is going to try and. Get an ensnare onto Zai. Again, the arrow's gonna come out. The creep! Oh no! The creep! It blocked it! Zai, though. Well, he gets off the Poison Nova. Are Optic going to try and capitalize on this? They're actually gonna fly out here. PyCat's here. TP is coming in. Do they have vision? Nope. PyCat does have the Chronosphere. He really wants his kill on MP. MP is super farmed right now, but Oracle is sitting behind him. 33 is going to lead the way. Managed to get the silence onto Bebby. They have to stop this Naga Siren sleep, and CCNT is going to come over the side. Misses the stun. Can't nice get the, sleep. the big nuke out. The sleep comes down from Bebby, and now the roll in from Bello. Oh, it. They, okay, they, They're going to try and time this on the way back. The sleep doesn't quite last long enough. He does manage to stun CNC and C once. Now he's time dilated. Needs the help from the Oracle to be able to protect and manage to put the magic immunity onto himself. Gets the ultimate off onto Velo. TP away from Dubu. Ah, the Yule Scepter from CC and C will stop that one. They get the pick off on the support, but Velo, he certainly is going They're to be quite him. happy after this. Velo just going to blink out. And all the while, your Naga's just farming. Use the BKB just to pick up the kill on the Oracle. Yes, the Naga Sleep was used, but... Dude, he almost has Scotty. Yeah. Oh. He has not been touched at all. Eric Dong, Scylla Bear, aka 747, aka Seven Susie. <laughs> the man with a billion pseudonyms. You don't you get one, man. All right, this is your last one. I'll respect the Ryoya, and that's it. It's such a hard name to say. I'll respect the Ryoya. Ryoya. And that's it. That's Ryoya. your last one. You don't get to choose in a year. You, you know it's an anime name, too, right? Of course I know it's an anime <laughs> name. I know that's not his name. His name is Eric. <laughs> oh, Zai picks up the bounty rune. Okay, well, somebody got it. <laughs> 24 and a half minutes in, he's like, oh, hey, there's oh, a bounty hey. rune. What a coincidence. I'll stick around for another 30 seconds and pick up another one. This Medusa has the 700 mana talent, and she's got a full Scotty at 24 minutes cap. Oh, my God. she's. They just haven't been able to touch her in these fights. Yeah. They're not winning fights without her being there, and she is by far the most farmed hero on the map. Zai's gonna go for it, MP. He's gonna try and push out as well. They're gonna spot MP, CC and C is still gonna push forward, leaving Zai behind. Now he's gonna turn around now, but the arrow nice already arrow. landed onto Zai, and Zai's already taken. Oh. Bello comes in, managed to bounce out onto 33. He's being controlled up far too much. There are too many ensnares. Uh, Night Stalker and his mobility is just limited against these Oracle and Naga Siren. They might finally take mid tower though. I kind of want Ryoya to TP for this. I don't think that they should necessarily give up this mid tower. I think you just plant your Dusa there. They're going to come in with the Pango and the Naga Siren. They're actually going to try and make a, a pick off out of it, but you could see Optic playing farther and farther with from the heroes that could wrap around on them. Yeah, I absolutely don't think they should give up that tower. And they're being a little bit greedy here by splitting, and they're showing that they're splitting, but I think they feel comfortably far enough. Especially with two dead right now. Yeah. Pike can do nothing but farm. He's got his BKB trying to work on Shadow Blade next. What? All right. I thought I went offline. What happened? There you go. All right. Well, Immortals just owns this game now. They're going to take whatever towers they want. Wait for Optic to uh, defend one of them. And that's so much. I mean, they're already up in net worth, and now they're taking multiple tier twos. That's just going to keep shooting upwards. 
High Cat won't be able to do the same in this bottom lane. I'm sure somebody will defend it in time. Unless maybe Immortals wants to trade it out. Tier 2 for Roche. Between the arrow and now the physical damage that Dusa offers, it's going to be a little bit slow. Man, you're... But if Optic drop a game to Immortals, who dropped a game to Baidu King, <laughs> wild. NA is wild. Anything can happen. This is what you were talking about. Like, on the right day, it doesn't matter if you're the better team overall throughout the year. You just need one good day. And this might just be Immortals' one good day. We give it to... Oh, man. I thought they were going to give it to MP. I, I thought the Dusa was unkillable, to be honest. No one's unkillable in Duda. Dota. That's the beauty of it, right? Mm. I said Duda. Dota. Duda. <laughs> Moonline Shadow. Go okay, for the game on to Zai. Zai the has been one. They saw top. destroyed so many times. They're going to be able to get the ensnare on Peter Pan Dam as well. They're going to try and get both of these kills. They actually kill Peter first, save Zai for last. They, but They should have seen the Moonlight Shadow on the uh, Medusa On the Medusa, top. yeah. Nobody was looking there, apparently. Yeah, PyCat's got to uh, deal with bottom lane right now. That's, that's his job. Can't afford to let a Deuce line up go high ground this early, but... She has Aegis. Like, what are they supposed to do against her? Pycat yeah. just has to pressure the side lane, which is what he's doing, but they're not threatened at all. They know they'll take it before he does. They're pinging him right now, but Pycat, it, it's a game of chicken at this point. Yeah. And I don't believe Pycat can do the same damage that the Deuce can, but maybe with creeps. I mean, he's got creeps, and he's not having to go high ground. This is very doable. Okay, the sleep is set up. Sleep. Medusa, everybody's going to TP back. Fellow's going to try. Oh, he actually doesn't have Rolling Thunder to get the instant disable, so Pycat will be able to get off his BKB. Hold on, get the ensnare now. The BKB's wearing down, but they're going to try and just burst him with physical oh, damage. They dead. actually do get him. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Just straight up dead. That is rough. This is... Dubu making the marks. He knows that they're pushing out this top lane, running at him. Dubu might just die here. Does get you could just TP. Fates edict. You could just TP. You could have just TP. Well, maybe he can ult instead. He ults himself. Can do some heals. Febby's actually going to be able to catch CC and C underneath the tower with the arrow coming in. Yule Scepter to dodge that. Will be able to keep himself alive a little bit longer. Moonlight Shadow. Now that's actually going to be good. CC and C with the BKB trying to walk away, but the physical damage is just too much. MP does so much. 33. He will be able to TP out at least, but he just led CC and C to his doom. Back to back core deaths. Jesus. When Optic look good, it's when PyCat is just going off. Yeah. Like, they gave PyCat a free game. Optic looks great. They gave him the best possible hero matchup late game. This game is one of the games that I've seen PyCat look his worst right now. 1 4 and 2. It's only been a part of three kills, which isn't saying much because Optic as a whole, at 30 minutes, only have eight. Yeah. Just not the active kind of style that you need with this sort of lineup. A lineup that features Night Stalker, Void, and Lena against a lineup that has a Medusa. Oh, okay. This big off on MP is big, though. Yes. They get the right Chronosphere. They run into the big carry that they needed to. Bello might actually get cut out here, too. But Doesn't this T-Fight could be really bad. Zai managed to get off his Poison Nova before he gets bursted down. He will end up dying to this Dusa. Now, Optic is still positioning themselves like they want to collide on this. 33 behind them right now. But the Poison Nova just doesn't do anything to this Dusa, who still has the extra life in the Aegis. Oh, managed BPD. to get one shot onto Peter. Peter does have a TP. He's going to juke his way through the trees. He'll be okay for now. 33 came in from behind, tried to go for Bello. Bello will actually be able to survive. Gets off the Rolling Thunder. Tries to hit PyCat. PyCat Sid pops BKB. Immediately hit by the net, though. Royo starts laying some damage into him. Now, PyCat will be able to get off the time walk. He keeps himself alive for now. Royo's damage was slowed down by the Yule Scepter from CCNC, but now he's just going to focus on 33. Ice Path managed to get that one, but 33 just outside of the shrine isn't getting the heal. Caught by the net once again, and Immortals will be able to take that pick off. And now Velo pops the Guardian Greaves. His team's still very healthy. They know for, they know the Void doesn't have Chrono. And so this is an easy fight for them to continue to chase, even though it looks a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. They know there's no turnaround potential. Optic at that point just have to get out. They're circling out mid. BKB charges getting lower and lower for PyCat. 20k net worth at 31 minutes for Roya. That is pretty hey, crazy. He's at 19. 732. Ah, oh, excuse me. Don't give him what he doesn't have. <laughs> 75 gold away now. He has the uh, Mjolnir, which he's going to be. Didn't he? Uh, he bought a Maelstrom earlier, and he's going to complete a, a full out Mjolnir pretty soon. 
Oh, he's a little bit farmed. Yeah, just just a tad. Has the Aegis. Debbie trying to set up on Pycat. He's going for the split push on the tier one. If he gets an ensnare or the song, he can let the rest of his team TP in. Royo's going to be the last one out. Doesn't look like he's going to be caught. Here comes the Rolling Thunder. Does manage to hit him. Pycat didn't activate his BKB, but now gets it off. Gets away with a Shadow Blade. They do not have any counter detection. The Dust just now going to Vela's pocket. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they are trying to catch some heroes here as they know they are separated. But they're going to turn on to CCNT with the Moonlight Shadow. He tries to get away the BKB. Yule Scepter buys him a little bit of time, but now MP and Royo come in. What a beautiful Ice Path from Peter, though. Managed to get these Stone Gaze off on a couple of those heroes. Royo's dropping low, and now the Aegis is actually out. popped. He is exposed. He's only at 500 mana. They can chase him down pretty easily here. They're going to catch him with the LSA. Just throw all the damage into him. CC and C needs to be careful of MP. Jukes into the trees. Just 40 HP. Meanwhile, Royo is saved by the Oracle. MP is caught. Turn around. LSA, nice they're going to kill off the Marana and Royo. So much damage coming his way. He will fall after that Oracle Ultimate Fellow. He's going to be slowed down. Time dilation going to be canceled by Dubu as best he can with a Fortune Send. Swashbuckle coming up, trying to get the other side of the tree. There goes that magic immunity. Disables it out. Managed to get a good amount of damage thanks to the Javelin onto 33. The two supports will be able to back out with their offlaner. Surprising that Optic can't take that team fight even with the two damage dealers dead. But still, Optic, maybe it's a good thing they don't play greedy. That team fight was a massive win for them. That was fantastic for them. And this Dusa just didn't think she was going to lose the Aegis at that time. She had already committed the Hurricane Pike. Nice chrono. They finally get a 5-on-5 five five fight, or a 5-on-3. Immortals, they filter in heroes too late. And that's them being a little bit too greedy. They want to defend that top tower yeah. while simultaneously pushing out that bottom tower. But we know their, the nature of their lineup is so slow. They can't connect to bottom as quickly. And Optic at that point have to take advantage of that. They absolutely do. It feels like, to me... The, the greedy part is sending your Naga Siren, who's like your hard reset yes. to go and get the kill on the Void. That was 2,000 gold in favor of Optic after that fight. Also, CCNC lived with a stupid low amount of health. Yeah, he, like he was sitting HP. at 40 HP, which is crazy. Yeah. Febby looking for him right now. CCNC. He needs to be able to stay on top of him. Can't let CCNC juke through the trees too much. He's trying to body block him right now as best he can. CCNC realizes this, but he won't be able to get out fast enough. The Shadow Blade, they do have the vision. They'll catch him. Nice pick. They keep to trying to do this weird thing too. Like they try to, they keep trying to kill uh, this this Pycat Void yeah. with just Pango plus Naga Siren, and they're using the sleep to do so, and it's just not really working. Yeah, if you if you do the Marana arrow off of this song, like oh. he can't be KB. PPD but. gonna get caught out here on the right side. TP out the ensnare is gonna come out from Febby. Maybe you take the kill out. on that. I think if you're Immortals right now, you want to wait for the next Aegis, and if you're Optic. You just want to keep the lanes dealt with as much as you possibly can. Allow your Lina to play faster on the map, which is what she was doing at bottom before she got picked off. Zai going to be caught by Velo. Rolling Thunder to stall up Zai, allow his Deuce to catch up. Zai has been who this entire game? 1, 12, and 4. This I don't know what support Venomancer is not looking good. I don't know what the... It doesn't feel like it's really had its purpose or yeah. impact. They might just go high ground because there's no Veno. The yeah, Venom straight up to the top lane. Tier 3 is already at half HP. They're to the point, too, where uh, you could pop your Glyph here, but nobody on the side of Optic is going to be alive soon enough. They're in this awkward spot where nobody wants to use buyback because they're about to respawn. And they're not even sure if they could take the team fight, I bet. Yeah. Not going to bother on this one. And I think this is the right decision. It's like, what are you supposed to do in that position? Even if you have buyback, you're not going to use it because you're going to respawn so soon. As soon as we get level 25 for the Dusa, Split Shot uses modifiers, meaning both the Scotty as well as the Mjolnir. That's a gigantic upgrade in damage. Just be able to slow everybody down, get multiple lightning procs off, more Split Shot usage. Febby, good pickup. I love this Lotus Orb. Like, the only way it feels like Optic can actually win a fight is if they manage to silence Naga Siren and blow somebody else up. Just kite around the Naga, but with that Lotus Orb, it'll be a lot harder to do. CCNC is looking for the pickoff onto Dubu. He knows he can't go for the Dusa, so he just takes Dubu's life in hand and tries to get out. Now, he does have a Yule Scepter, but he may have to pop it here on somebody. The Ensnare's going to try and come out. They do manage to reveal a couple of heroes. Oh, the arrow from MP. Always on point, man. Jump in. Velo's going to try some find some extra heroes knowing that CCNC being dead means Optic can't take the fight. Zai is going to be the one who dies. That's a gem. 
Now, they're going to try and come back in with a Poison Nova ticking. Pycat does have the Chronosphere. He's caught multiple heroes with the Macro Pyre. This is looking That's a good. Nice macro pyre. The BKB is activated. The song won't take effect, but he's trying to go for the Dusa. And look at this Dusa. He's only at half HP after all of that. Pycat, oh, you didn't even come close to taking him down. Okay, GG. they're just going to call it. Yeah. I think they know at this point. Like, if we're not killing the Dusa here, she's going to get the Aegis and the Cheese. That is the game, and that is a surprising one. We thought that Optic was going to play very fast, kill heavy here, but Immortals played this game so well. Yeah. They were very good with their movements. Everything led to a kill. Their cores were shuffling around nonstop. You saw the rotations on a mid. They were able to grab that tower. They took a very, very good 4vx fights where Ryo is just farming on the opposite side of the map, getting space, just hitting Ancients while his team is just dealing with them. Very well done. That was. That isn't Immortals that I have not seen this season. Welcome back, PSJ. Grant, did you think you were, were going to see an Immortals victory at all no. in this series? Nope. Especially, you guys were talking about how are they going to catch anyone on the map. Well, they found a, a good way to do it, and they did it multiple times, and we're also seeing Pango, how good that hero actually... I'm, I'm glad, right? I think yeah. Pango, I, I still think he's going to be the hero in TI. Like, if he doesn't get changed at TI, he'll be first pick, first ban every game. And Yeah, that's an Immortals that, what, we expected to see six, seven, eight months ago. We didn't see anything out of them since, like, Dream League, really. And now they're just owning again. I mean, we know they have the skill, right? All these players and these teams have the skill. But they just haven't shown it in so long. Yeah, yeah. I, my initial impression, like, from what I realized I was wrong about was when I said I thought they'd have all that lane shove from Optic that would constantly create pressure. The Pango Blast pick was really good. He went first item Javelin, so then he basically clears waves instantly, so that relieves a lot of that. But then also Immortals got like four kills, I think it was, in like three minutes or something. They had yeah. the first four kills of the game. And whenever you kill a team that's goal is the lane pressure, that shuts that down real hard. So I, I just see, like, I thought the pace of the game would go much faster for Optic, and instead it kind of like... I feel like the Void Pick might have slowed it down too much. Yeah. I feel like you had all this lane pressure, and then Void's a hero that survives, but he doesn't push the lane at all. So you now, like, having lane pressure in two lanes instead of three is, like, very, very much, like, much weaker than, uh, like, I, I just felt like the way it would play out was very different, but the Pango Pick was really good, and the kills early were really important, too. It felt like the um, Optic had this idea that, it was like a three and a half position, right? Where this Venomancer yep. was supposed to take over a lane yeah, and keep yeah. it pushed out while the Night Stalker uses the early farm to go hunt and just kill things, yeah. right? But the Venomancer against that Naga Siren Murata was just food. Yeah. He got no farm whatsoever. Yeah. Which we actually mentioned in the draft that he can just yeah. die to the Naga Net, which is like a great way to deal with that. It's just like when it's... It, it seems like it would have been different if it was a core Venomancer from the beginning rather than being like this level four Venom that's trying to do it like five minutes into the game. I think either way, Venno's just going to die. I yeah. think they just knew they were going to win that lane no matter what, probably from the beginning. That's true. And, and then Void went top and died too, yeah. which is like yeah. level 7 with Chrono. That's really bad. Yep. I don't know. That's the thing, right? Immortals, like, they probably came into this day thinking, right, if we just win four games in a row, like, that's simple, yeah. right? People win <laughs> pubs like that. I mean, it's not simple, but, like, if we win four games in a row, we are going to TI. Like, it's, yeah. it's a fresh new day. Who cares how we limped in? We lost to Baidu once. We're back. We beat Baidu to qualify for this. Let's just win four games, boys. Yeah, That's group it. stage doesn't matter anymore yeah. at all. Your the records, to yeah, back to bracket. square one. Marana MP looked uh, insane. Oh, nice. Dude, Marana's just a, a great hero too, right? Yeah. I mean, that's why it's your, their first pick heroes are Naga Marana. I don't think they're going to let that happen again, or they pick the Naga themselves. But I felt like you know. that Venno forward position was also an issue, though. It felt like it was. That was they they couldn't they couldn't really make plays the same way that Febby was able to. Like, he yeah. just, Febby just went around the map, like, netting people. He's like, huzzah! And you just, like, chuck I mean, nets and kill people. Didn't we say pregame, like, they were gonna have a harder time killing? Was it just, like, I thought that optics line. Did? I thought that, I, th I thought that optics lineup would be very fast. They would just, no. like, push out the lane. The Lino would just go around the map doing whatever That's she what felt I like. That's what I thought, yeah. Alright, All right, guys. Well, our game two is gonna be starting up very soon, so we're going to take an app break, and we'll be back. Game two of Immortals versus Optics coming up. <laughs> 